And let's begin. Welcome everybody to the May 1st, 2024 meeting of the Community Preservation Committee. It is May Day, which should be the official day of spring, right? Um, it sort of is. So happy spring. Even though it's been going on a while, it seems like it's finally here with the um, flowers out and the turkey in my backyard right now picking away. So happy spring, everyone. We, as always, start off our meetings with uh, general public comment. Is there anyone out there who would like to comment? Uh, Sarah, do you see anyone? Uh, I see. Uh, Megan, any oh, interest? Is that why you're here or Megan. just to listen to us? Spend your May Day listening to us. You guys are always fascinating. Uh, what can I say? <laughs> no comment from Megan on that. Okay. So... Uh, Sarah, no one else out there? There there are no other members of the public. I am not hearing you, Sarah. Oh, sorry. There are, let's see if it works better. There are no other members of the public. Just Megan. Uh, I'm wondering if my sound is off. I'm not hearing Sarah. Are the people hearing Sarah? Yes. Can someone else speak? See if I have sound. Someone else, Kevin? Hey, Brian, uh, it's Kevin. Oh, my. Yeah. And Martha, I'm here to right, Brian. Bear with me for one moment, folks. I can I hear no, you, Brian. I've got no sound. I can't hear. Let me see what's going on. Let me try headphones. Maybe go out and come back in. Oh. Okay. Can someone say something? Hello. Uh -huh. I, I can hear. Thank you. Uh, Sarah, you said there was no one else for general public comment. Is that correct? Correct. correct. Okay. Thank you. Uh, next on the agenda is approval of minutes. Sarah Swamp with work was unable to get us that. Uh, no fault of her own, but uh, heavily involved in other stuff. So we have no minutes to approve. Um, Chair's report. Oh, good. Let me see here. I let me. Uh, chair's report. A couple things. Uh, most and perhaps most notable is that um, Beverly Bates, our mayoral representative, has sadly left us. She has gone on to greener pastures. Um, she spoke highly of her time here, but felt that. Uh, um, housing was more pressing in some of her volunteer work, so she's has moved on to that. She's an appointment by the mayor, so we will leave it up to the mayor to uh, work on appointing someone else to begin our fall round as that uh, for that position. Uh, traditionally, that's been sort of a housing focused uh, person, but I think that is up for the mayor to decide. A uh, second on my uh, chair's report is that some of you may have noticed in the paper that the pickleball folks are active. They're pleased as pickleball that uh, they were granted 350,000 from Community Preservation Committee and approved by the city council, but that's not enough. They need more. So uh, this Saturday, is it? Uh, no, this Sunday, Mother's Day, um, from 1.30 to 3 p.m. at the indoor pickleball court, which I did not know existed, at College Church on Pomeroy Terrace, there will be a fundraising event. Uh, they're trying to raise 50000 and then 50000 more. Uh, 50000 to go forward and, I guess, solicit construction bid, bids, and then 50000 in addition to do some of the, the bathrooms, the water fountain, uh, that stuff. So uh, for those of you looking for things to do on a Sunday, this Sunday afternoon, 1.30, 3.30, at the indoor pickleball court, the mayor will be there, uh, Senator Comerford, who's always everywhere, uh, she will be there, and there will be tutorials on the sport. So there you go. Um, the other thing is that, uh, remember that, uh, we've had this ongoing relationship with the Community Preservation Coalition that 
has not always been um has has some sometimes been somewhat contentious uh we asked Stuart Saginaw before we committed to uh contributing fees for uh, our fees for the 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 requested uh membership in that organization we asked that Stuart, Stuart Saginaw speak to us and address some of our concerns as a committee he had a bunch of medical issues and wasn't able to 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 join us um and then he asked to he asked to speak, and in our meetings have been quite full these last two things. Sarah had a conversation with him, uh, and I think he expressed uh, some concern that we were not on board with paying our dues. Uh, Sarah expressed to him the necessity of the committee understanding what the role of the Community Preservation Coalition is and how it contributes to our committee work before we committed. Uh, our our volunteer dues they're not required dues uh so we're going to try to schedule something with Stuart um early on in the next funding round in the fall so that he can come tell us about what it is that they do and again I'm sure make a a uh, a, uh, a request that that we we get up on our our dues paying um so that is my chair's report. Any comments or questions about any of those items? No? Me. <laughs> uh, Chris. <laughs> um, thanks, Brian. On the last item, um, I actually got an email. Since I'm the one who usually says the most about um, our dues, um, um, I actually got an email from Stuart um, on Friday and didn't have a chance to reply to him until late Friday night, inviting him to give me a call on Monday. He asked, he said that he had heard there were some questions or he had some questions about um, what our concerns were. And so reached out to me. I followed up with him by email. Uh, I haven't heard back from him. So I I don't know if he spoke with Sarah in, in the intervening period and got the answers he was looking for or just hasn't had a chance to get back to me. Uh, but he did reach out to me directly. And um, I'm, you know, I, as I said to him, I'm more than happy to have a conversation with him about what my concerns are. Great. Thank you, Chris. I have a phone call scheduled with him for tomorrow. So hopefully some of that stuff could be addressed as well. Any other comments? Okay. Uh, Sarah sent out um, nine of the council orders um that will go to city council uh, given our recommendations uh two weeks ago in our uh in our meeting at that time um funding eight projects and then the ninth uh i'm sorry funding yeah eight projects and then the ninth um being one that we are bonding uh those are orders that uh, sarah do we go through one at a time is that best to do that do we take them as a as a whole? It, it, your pleasure. I, if you'd like to go through them one at a time, I, I can pull them each up. Um, yeah, could, could, could we do that? On the ones that people have the most questions about or want to edit the most. Why don't we go through one at a time and and see? What Ryan and I did address some of the 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 typos. So if you notice typo stuff, that that has likely been fixed. Right. Any any particular order? You want me to? No, just any fire away. Alphabetical order. Okay. Sure. So we can start with the APR since A is is first in the alphabet. Um. Perhaps while we're doing this, we can combine this with the next agenda item, which is that if we have any conditions that we want to attach to this, conditions that either go on this or go on the um, on the manuscript that goes to the applicant itself, so people have conditions uh, or issues with how Sarah has presented this. 
Uh, and, and for those of you who are, especially who are newer to the committee, so the, this is what goes to city council for them to act on uh, along with a cover letter that details the process and provides additional links to the applications and other background information. Um, and then for the non-city applicants, there will be a, a contract developed for each of these. And the contract includes you know, standard conditions for all city grants um, and contracts, as well as any specific conditions that the committee might want to impose. So this is the council order. The contract has yet to be finalized because city council has not approved this. But do we have conditions that we would want to set on this, on the APR project? Anybody? Are we good with this? Yeah, thumbs, thumbs up. I can see most people, but not everybody. Um, so I guess moving on then to the next one, Sarah. All right, that'll be Crafts Avenue housing. Change, there's no easy way to change it today. All right. Okay, hopefully folks had a chance to look at this. Any comments? typos, additions, or conditions we want onto the Crafts Avenue project. We are good to go on this. All right, we are cruising here. Next one, Sarah. All right, next will be the downtown park design. Okay, comments? Conditions? Good to go? All right, Sarah, next. Oh, great. Next will be Historic Northampton. I can't remember whether it was the website or something I received in the mail uh, from Historic Northampton, but our Chris Oman was featured prominently in his role as volunteer would carver wood shaver timber framer timber something right something that you yeah they um remember last year we did uh that they did a they brought in a frame a timber framer to redo the do the work on shepherd's the shepherd's barn and i was active in that and then they brought um alicia spence is is, is the framer and uh they brought Alicia back this year to do a much smaller project that they raised funding for. It was a, uh, it's a, it's a garden shed to support the gardens there and the school next door. And um, they were looking for volunteers. So it wasn't our money, but they were looking for volunteers. And I, I enjoyed it so much last time that uh, I spent a weekend um, doing that. Uh, and uh, they hadn't heard that we had given them the grant money or had recommended the grant money for them. So they were thrilled. So um all in all, just a, a a a good day to be down there. So, right. Hey, Sarah. I got the... a Chris. Maybe you're catching the same typo. I just noticed that this yeah. is not the closing collection preservation project. This... That's what I was going to say. And I suppose in the first whereas, Sarah, there is a period after ink, historic Northampton ink. Is that right? There is now. Uh, any other comments or conditions for this? Okay, next. All right. 
Uh, next is housing monitoring. Distilling this one into a council order was particularly challenging. Well, I think you did a nice job, particularly in that second, whereas sort of making clear what it is that this is and is not. I know that the spacing is odd in some of these council orders, but that will all be wiped when the, the council clerk edits these. Perfectly. Any comments? or conditions for this? Uh, just in the first one, um, this is the first one. Um, I, this is a very small thing. Um, monitor is used uh, three times in the same sentence and you may wanna change the second monitor to oversee. Um, I, don't, I don't know if that's exactly that's the that's right. Not, that sounds true. And then I think the third one is fine. That reads much better. Thank you. Maybe Thank you, should the third one be capitalized? I don't know. I think so. I'm not an English major, but. Whoops. And the same, it's not affordable housing. Any other comments or conditions that we want set on this? Good to go? All right, next. Rain. Uh, next is Lathrop Communities Invasive. Um, again, I had another comment. Um, I don't know whether this is important or not, but I, whether we should mention it's land stewardship bank that's doing the work. Um, is that, I don't know if that's necessary or not, but I think it's land stewardship, right, Sarah? Uh, that was their plan. I They may change depending on the, the okay. availability. If East, if East Hampton doesn't fund this project, the, the timing may shift, but that was Lathrop's plan. Okay. So maybe leave it out. Any other questions or conditions? All right, on to the next one. Memorial Hall is next. For Memorial Hall, we'll be getting to the uh, letter that we're going to look at that Sarah has taken feedback from a bunch of folks and written to uh, city folks. So we're not going to deal with that right now. This is a little different. And Sarah, if you want to scroll down at some point to that uh, bottom section of this, where you talk about, I thought on this you had about, uh, about how this was bonded. Uh, no, uh, so that that's the playground. Oh, oh, right, right, right. Forgive me. Wrong project. Thank you. Any comments, conditions? Um, again, small thing, uh, under the Secretary of the Interior Standards, it should be U.S. Secretary of the Interior Standards um, for, hold on a second, I have to look it up. Preservation of Historic Properties. It's the official title of it. And the standards should be capitalized because it is a it's a publication, 
Mm -hmm. So standards capitalized, preservation and historic properties capitalized. Thank you, Martha. These are the changes that may seem minor, but are actually very important. Any other comments or conditions? All right, we are flying through this next. Right, so next is the Ryan Road Playground and this, this is the one with the bonding. I just never end. The fourth whereas needs to be a whereas. Yes. And a comma. Do we want to have some sort of condition that they perform all the work in a single phase or something to that effect? I think that's important. And also, um, Brian, you had brought up a really good point at the end of the last meeting or the end of the, the discussion about this project, the last meeting about the need for oversight. And I thought that was more than important, it's really critical. Um, Sarah and I had a conversation about this and it sounds like the organizers of the project have thought that through, but I just wondered whether we wanted to, you know, insert something about it. So, Martha, so that would be- you know, pro an owner's project manager. Yeah, so, so two ways to do it. If it's critical enough uh, in the committee's opinion to have, to give, council will look at it, then we certainly could include it here, or we could add it into the memorandum of understanding for the, the grant funds. Uh, so that would be between the, the committee and the, the school department. Martha, what are your feelings about that? I think the memorandum would be fine. I don't know if the big city council is going to, um, I don't want to say they won't care, but I just, I don't, it may be too in, much in the of a for them. Um, but I think certainly in the memorandum, I, I think it would be important. So let's come up with wording for that to be included in the memorandum, that condition, which is that <clears throat> the, um, that Ryan Road, Road School work with the city to establish a project manager that is, that is what? Uh, that will oversee the installation, uh, you know, work with a contractor to oversee the installation of the playground. So are you able to type that out for us to look at? Yes. Um... Martha, are, are you thinking that that would be a, a separate entity from the school department or? Uh, not, necessarily, not necessarily, because we talked about that. And they said, yeah. Sarah, Sarah Houdin just said that that, that will be, I guess, I don't know who it is, someone who works with the school department. <laughs> um, but they do need, I, yeah. So I think we just need to make sure that they're designating someone to do that. Yeah. Uh, so the, the applicant shall designate an owner's project manager to work. Yeah, to oversee the construction of the playground. Okay. Can you, are you able to take that out so we can see that, Sarah? Yes. Makes me yeah. makes me nervous when you watch me type. So I'll share it in a second. Oh, we're um, watching you. <laughs> um, and did we also want to be specific that the work shall be done in a single phase? 
So she'll be bid and, and completed in a single phase. I think that was our intent in going above and beyond what the applicant's request was. So seems like we should make that clear. Is it uh, owners? Is that a apostrophe S? Thanks for reminding us of those, Martha. Any other conditions we want to set on this one? Uh, Sarah, do you want to talk about the conversation that you had with the uh, whoever it was about um, maybe not being able to bond for three years, but having to go to five years? Yeah, so our, the bond council was uh, not confident that we would be able to go out to bond only for three years on this project. Um, so the the wording intentionally leaves out the duration uh, to leave it open just just in case. So if, if three years is possible, um, they know that that's the preference. But if three years is not possible, either due to market uh, constraints or other conditions, that would allow them to go up to five years. Five years is the maximum. This project couldn't be bid for longer than that. I mean, couldn't be bonded for longer than that. Uh, additional. Questions, comments, or conditions for the Ryan Road Playground project? Again. Is it worth noting our preference for a three year bond or just? Um, not in the council it? order. So, council won't deal with the specifics of that. Um, if it comes up, I'll, I can address it with them and the, and the finance director can answer those questions. Um, but that's already been communicated to bond council, so they're aware. And there, and I, I, can you explain to us again the rationale for not being able to bond for three years? It's just that it's too short a, a time period, and municipal bonds uh, typically are for at least five years. Yeah. Welcome, Julia. Uh, any other questions or comments about the Ryan Road Playground? Thumbs up from Julia. Julia, will be the will you be there on Sunday at the pickleball uh, fundraiser? <laughs> no, no comment from Julia on, on that. Our pickleball rep has remaining silent. Uh, next one up, sir. Too many windows open. Zoom Zoom does not like this. Hold on. Who are we left with? Habitat and uh, ju just habitat. That's the last one. Just habitat. Okay, any questions? Is there if I ask a question? Uh, sure. Uh, um, I know that usually the initial purchase is restricted to someone at 60% of the area median income, but the deed restriction goes up to 80% uh, to assist on flexibility with resale. Thank you, Megan, that's a helpful comment. Thank you for chiming in on that. Any other questions, comments, or conditions on the Habitat one? Uh, one question uh, I uh, 
that we call the, the $6,000 uh, monitoring uh, grant raised the issue that if a family meeting the income requirements can't be found within a given period of time, then it can, uh, a unit could be more open to uh, market rates. So is this uh, accurate to say it will be permanently restricted? Um, not that I wanna have all possible eventualities con considered in a single sentence there, but I just wondered if that was in fact true. Uh, Megan, can you help us out with that one? Yeah, so if a income eligible buyer cannot be found within a certain time frame, the sale can go to a non-income eligible buyer, but the deed restriction remains. So that new buyer is still subject to the deed restriction when they go to sell the house, including the maximum resale restriction. I see. So the word permanently uh, still applies. It, it does. It goes, goes with the deed. Thank you. And thank you guys for your support. Thank you, Megan. We're glad you're here this evening to help us out with the wording on this one, whereas. Any other questions, comments, or conditions for the habitat? All right. Uh, so we have nine funded projects going to city council to recommend funding. Sarah, when is that going to happen? Uh, when the budget is completed. Uh, so it, to, to make the discussion a little bit more streamlined and not introduce additional questions about what the CPA is and whether it could be used, for example, to fund uh, public school items, um, it was recommended we wait until the budget is finalized and voted on. So probably in June, late, so may, maybe late June, early July. Well, not until then. So will this hold back funding for certain projects? Uh, it it shouldn't. Um, when applicants uh, apply, the, the timeline is that the, the funding should be available in, at the beginning of summer, and this doesn't materially change that. So it, it will affect it by a few weeks, um, but shouldn't be enough to impact anyone's project. City Council is voting on the city budget. When do we know? It goes to them uh, at a special meeting upcoming, maybe the, I think, and end of, I don't have it in front of me, but end of May or beginning of June. Okay, thank you. And again, I think we talked in a meeting or two before about whenever we're discussing with other folks in the community about CPC funding and recommendations that they know that these are restricted funds that go to the categories and cannot be used to general, general revenue. I think that's important for, for, for folks. So we have nine different recommendations going to city council uh sarah we have to vote on this i think is that correct yes so can we lump them all together we're lumping them all together into one package yes that's fine and sarah will take us through a roll call vote uh so motion first thank you sarah Moved. thank you kevin a second uh chris hellman Thank you. So the motion on the floor is for all nine of these projects as written to go as recommendations to go to city council when Sarah is able to get them there. Sarah? All right. So roll call vote on those. Julia? Yes. Lemmy? Yes. Uh, Chris Hellman? Yes. Chris Tate? Yes. Kevin? Yes. Jeff? Yes. Martha? Yes. And Brian? Yes. Unanimous. Thank you. And thank you, Sarah, as always, for putting those in a way that we can, that are understandable to us, but also understandable to uh, city councilors and other folks who haven't had the deliberations, the multiple meeting deliberations that we have. Hopefully that can make sense to them. And thank you, as always, for being at those meetings and guiding city councilors through any questions that they have on our behalf. Um, so I think we've, so looking at the agenda, I think we've, we've tackled those, those two line items, approving the council orders, as well as discussing contract conditions. So I think we're moving on to 
discussing feedback to applicants. And this is an opportunity for us to advise Sarah or ourselves as to any feedback we want to give to applicants. Uh, Sarah has drafted a letter to uh, regarding Memorial Hall, given some of our concerns. Uh, Sarah, do, can you pull up a draft of that? And sure, begin, absolutely. Begin to talk about that. Uh, so to refresh our memory, Sarah Pat is his position is what? Uh, Director of Central Services. Okay, and he's the one who spoke at meetings. Uh, perhaps we can spend a moment for all of us to read this. Sarah solicited contributions from us, and this was her best ability to try to distill that into a, a form that she felt was appropriate. And I know there were a lot of uh, personal feelings and, and opinions about you know all, all the projects, but this one in particular, but I, I tried to focus on the ones that were more broadly related to um, CPA funding and broad, broader financial planning. The minor edit um, national registered district, I feel like the D in district is probably capitalized. We've got some good wordsmiths, smithereens here. Sarah, you want to address some of the dis of the um, of what went into drafting this letter? Uh, so I, I got comments from a, a few uh, C of the CPC members, and I, I just tried to bring it all together and also distill what the conversation was during the um, the funding round at the last meeting. And I think your intent was also to, correct me if I'm wrong, present some tangible steps. Correct. Yes. That that they could take, and that's in that last paragraph there. And there may be others as well, but that that was just one example, and it's something that we've recommended to applicants in the past who either received uh, partial funding to do work or didn't receive funding at all. Um. Chris Hellman and Martha, you are two who uh, particularly focused in on the need to provide feedback to the city on this. Are you, do the two of you want to comment on that, uh, Martha? Yeah, I sent a, sent a, um, a marked up version back to Sarah. Unfortunately, I didn't get it out to her until like yeah, I, And I really pulled it up, Martha, and I, and I couldn't tell exactly because it was much shorter. Uh, and I it was much shorter. Was, yeah, but I can I can pull that one up too. Well, no, that's okay. Um, I I think um the I think what caught me up here um was it in the second paragraph? On the one hand, we're saying we have that we have this concern about their long term strategy for financing these this maintenance and upgrades. Um, and. We want the city to pursue the issue, um, but 
correct me if I'm wrong. I mean, what we're, what we're, I think we as a committee are thinking that they, they're, you can't be coming to us to solve that problem. So in the second sentence in this paragraph, we're saying, you know, the, the new historic preservation plan is, you know, basically suggesting the CPA do come in and, you know, not solve the problem, but just take more active role and, um, and, you know, taking care of these public buildings. So in some ways it sent, to me, it sent a little bit of a mixed message. Um, so I think in my, my suggestions, uh, what I, I, I did was try to get us to concentrate on more what role we think we could play, which is that, um, you know, we could finance the parts of these projects that are, uh clearly you know preservation related and those things those preservation related things are identified in a historic structure report not only what they are but what the priorities are so i reworded that a little bit um in this second paragraph to say that um but again um i may be misinterpreting what other people think but that was my sort of takeaway of it and yes, it is shorter. <laughs> uh, Sarah, is there a way to to put these put the first paragraph of of uh, Martha's with the first paragraph of the one you wrote, so we could? Uh, it's the same. So oh, the, the first the paragraph, first paragraph didn't change, right, Martha? Okay, so it's yeah. So it's I actually, think I might have rewrote a couple things, but yeah. Okay. And the and the red is your changes to Sarah's second paragraph. Is that correct, Martha? Yes. Yeah, so I took out a lot of language. So what you don't see there is what I took out. I'm, I apologize. This is not a very clear editing uh, job. To visually, it's not clear. No, it, it makes more sense now that now that you've explained it. Uh, Sarah, is there a way you can? Uh, Cut that par that paragraph and put it up next to the other par the second paragraph next to your paragraph so we can um, look at both. Yeah. Is that asking too much? Okay. I believe I can put them side by side. Let's see. There's nothing like wordsmithing by by committee. That's horrible. <laughs> no, no, no. No, we thank you, Martha. Here. <laughs> <laughs> Lisa's got Lisa Sarah's getting the comments all at once. It's Here. it's worse when you have comments that dribble in over the course of a week or two. And the comments don't always agree. <laughs> I think we're on the we're all on the same page on this. It's just how to word it in a way right. that the city can hear and that we can have some positive input moving forward. Oh, Zoom is, I can, I have them both up on my screen next to each other, but Zoom is not that smart and I can't share the, the screen itself for some reason. Um, hmm. What side do you just do? Does it, oh, does this work? Oh. Does it work? Does it work? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, what, uh, let's see how best to do this. Let's just have a, couple minutes to review that second and third yeah, and paragraph. So essentially Martha's taken out the the piece that it, and I agree that it, it does contradict the rest of the letter itself but I was trying to provide an additional framing um by relating this to the historic preservation plan uh, so not saying like hey these are things that are are just not allowable and not appropriate for CPA funding but you know, there's some additional work to do. Um, here's some ways that we could move forward. Okay, comments from other folks. We have two. Actually, before we move away from this, Chris Hellman, you had some strong mm -hmm. feelings about this as well. Do you want to comment? 
Sure. Um, and thank you both Sarah and Martha for, for your thoughts on this. Um, I, I think, I think that, um, Sarah's point that, um, you know, we didn't want to focus specifically on Memorial Hall and look at more broadly at the funding is, 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 is valid. But I also think that, um, they came to us for money for Memorial Hall. They didn't get it in the in the in the way that they wanted it to, and the, they wanted to, and the reasons they didn't were compelling. And I and I think they they the reasons they didn't get the the two point seven were compelling. And I and I think they ought to be articulated, which was, at least to my mind, um, I don't believe that CPA funds are. Um, I hate to use the word slush fund, but I'm gonna um, a slush fund for um, remediation of 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 past deferred maintenance and um, and further, um, I feel strongly enough about it that I want it to be clear to the city that I at least am gonna I'm going to be very uncomfortable if I get another request from the city, which does not demonstrate that the city's due diligence has been done to find funding with its within its other budget areas. Um, and maybe that's in the form of a comprehensive plan, or maybe it's just in a letter where they say, these are the things that we've done, but having a request show up on my desk that doesn't indicate how we got there and how they plan to move forward is 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 not satisfactory to me. Uh, nor is this idea that I want to see plans developed for each of their buildings um, and how they want to handle them. I, I want to see I want to see a I want to see a holistic plan from the town uh, that talks about their how they want to move forward um, with not just maintenance of their buildings, but specifically maintenance of their historic buildings, um, so that they're, they're, that they're balancing their approach and that they're not going to come to us with a series of, um, um, individual requests that don't reflect, um, uh, the other things that are going on. And, um, so I, I, I think they need to do a, a, a serious rethink about the way they approach this, uh, before they come to me again, looking for additional funds. Um, and, you know, that may not be uh, something that belongs in this letter, but it's certainly something that I, I plan on saying independently if, um, uh, if it's not reflected in whatever comes out of the committee. Uh, other committee members have comments on Chris's comment or these two versions of the letter to Pat McCarthy. Uh, I'll uh, just Sarah? say that I, I like uh, uh, Martha's second paragraph, and I like the points in uh, Sarah's third paragraph that propose some specifics about uh, both um, a long-term plan and coordination and conversation with members of uh, CPC. Um, so if somehow those two could be uh, blended, uh, maybe a, most of the third paragraph added on to uh, Martha's version, uh, that would look good to me. Martha, how would you feel about that? I think that's fine. I guess I, Chris, I don't disagree with you at all. And I've been, you know, pretty vocal about this myself and not only this round of funding, but in the previous round where we got those applications for city hall and um, the academy. And I, so I'm, I guess I'm sort of split on this because part of me wants to, you know, shake them and say, look, you've got to do something about this. Like, and don't look to us to solve it for you basically. But I also feel like we need to be clear about what we will entertain as a possible um, proposal. Like, where do we draw the line? You know, what is maintenance? I mean, is that, 
Yeah. Maybe we need to do a little more study of that and come up with some sort of a, you know, a clear explanation um, and, and put that in the revision of the um, community preservation plan. So it's clear to these applicants, you know, who come to us with these things that they haven't have been taking care of for years. Uh, it's not preservation, but it's neglect. <laughs> um, so I guess, you know, I'm in both camps, but I, yeah, you know, no, and I actually think that's a very financial problems with their historic buildings could consume this entire committee for two right. rounds of funding. And that's all we would talk about. And, and we can't do that. So yeah. Chris, let's, I, let's hear from other folks. Yeah. First. Yeah. But I'm uh, sorry. Jeff? Right. Jeff. Thank you. Um, first, um, I want to apologize for missing the last meeting. I was on the road for 16 days. Oh. Um, and the last two, the last two thirds of that was back to back conferences. And I just could not make the time to zoom in. Um, that said, I kind of agree with what uh, Chris just said. And I'm wondering if the last line, instead of saying, um, we would be happy to meet, um, why don't, given that we're going into the summer, why don't we just say something like, you know, we we strongly encourage a meeting <clears throat> over the summer because I think this is going to happen again. And I, I kind of agree with what Martha just said about at some point we have to draw the line and what are, wh what will we and will not entertain. And I think it it's good to be proactive and get out in front of it so we don't have to deal with this again. And I'll, I'll leave it at that. Uh, Julia? Um, yeah, thanks. So uh, I am on the road actually, and, and I could cut out at any minute, so I totally understand not making some meetings. Um, I, I agree with what Chris said. And in terms of what you just said, Martha, I was thinking a lot about that. And then I started to think of cases where maybe it would be a little bit tricky if we had such rigid rules. So for instance, if Historic Northampton suddenly one day purchased a, a property that we didn't know they were going to get and they wanted to restore it. And the reason they need to restore it and preserve it is because it has been neglected. Do we now not pay, provide some funding for something like that where they need to do the restoration due to neglect, admittedly not their own neglect, but due to neglect, uh, or is there some other nuanced way of saying what you're what you're trying to say? Because I, I do get it. What we're really trying not to do is be the funding source for the city's deferred maintenance. That's, I think, what we're trying to say to them. We are not your source. Thanks. Chris Tate? Yeah, I I, I agree with Chris's sentiment. Um, I just don't know that we want to put that in a letter. So I, I kind of like the the tone of the letter that's before us. And then, you know, like Jeff was saying, we could maybe have a more strongly worded, you know, we are meeting this summer to discuss this kind of thing. But I feel like some of the, I don't know that we want to put it in writing necessarily. That's just me though. Let me. Yeah, I think how I remember the conversation about the letter being like a beginning to a conversation. So maybe instead of saying, I think it said something like we'd be happy to meet, maybe just like actually requesting a meeting so these things could be said. Um, don't, you know, leaving it up to them to say, would be happy to meet. They'd probably just say, I don't know if they would, but just kind of actually requesting it and going ahead and having Chris and Martha and whoever be in the meeting and say the things rather than trying to write it in the letter. Uh, Kevin, I don't think you've spoken on this. Any comments? Um, I've, I've been in agreement that uh, we shouldn't be in the business of uh, repairing uh, things that have not been properly maintained. Um, and I think that I would prefer to see it delivered verbally in a meeting uh, rather than uh, captured for eternity in a, a letter of any kind. I think at this point, it's better since we don't have uh, a, a clear line um, 
and what we're trying to get is a, a sense and a thematic message. And I think that's easier done in person. Uh, I think everyone's had a chance to speak on this. Chris Hellman, you had other stuff I believe you wanted to say. No, I, I just wanted to echo, I guess, pick up on what Martha had said, um, and 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 Lemmy also uh, just now is that I think if we view this as the first bite at the apple, that's fine, and we don't have to, you know, it doesn't have to be the 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 final the our final say on this um and and i think i think martha's right to suggest that we need to develop our thinking a little more more fully um i, I don't want to get into it right now but i actually uh, i i really appreciate julia's point but i i don't have any problem in my own mind uh drawing a difference between um the scenario she had with historic northampton and and what i see going on here um, for a couple of different reasons. I don't want to spend the time elaborating on it now, but I'd be more than happy to have that conversation with anybody who wants to. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll, I'll leave it at that for now. Thanks. Um, Sarah, in the, the item, agenda item coming next is our uh, community preservation plan update. Uh, and the process to be doing that. And I think part of what we've been waiting for, correct me if I'm wrong, is the Historic uh, Preservation Committee sort of coming up with their final plan and us incorporating that into our plan. And uh, Martha, I'm looking toward you as, as one of the drivers with that as a way to help us, once we see what you've come up with, help us to further uh, figure out what our role is um, and I'm wondering if a meeting is not, uh, uh, when, when this meeting with the city should take place, whether we want to have a chance to digest what the, what was coming out of your committee and the update that is coming out of that and how we want to see how that gels with the existing community preservation plan and updates that we want, uh, and then have a conversation with the city. So. It may not be something we do in the summer. It may be something that we delay for a little bit, not to put it on the back back burner, but to sort of uh, make sure that we have a chance to discuss what it is that we think is best and then incorporate feedback from the city. Yeah, and and part of it, part of the the struggle with with writing the letter um, for me and and maybe in. For some of you and your deliberations as well is you know there, there's two different tracks here there's you know what what's allowable under the cpa and then there's what um what all of you and what the the community feels is a priority um and it, and community priorities are different and some communities make it a you know a standard practice to fund work to municipal buildings um and some of them don't um, neither one is a, a right answer or a wrong answer. It's just a, a preference. Uh, so the, the update to the community preservation plan will need to reflect the priorities in Northampton, and maybe we'll garner a little bit more discussion than than updates have in the in the past, um, because it is part of this new plan that that's just developed. Uh, and that that sentence that I included about the preservation plan recommending that um, some additional focus and thought be put into the uh, how the CPA ties into the capital improvement plan and, and other recommendations is something maybe the, the uh, CPC hasn't really considered fully yet. Sarah, can you go back to the uh, dual image of the two two different letters that Martha? I don't, I don't know. Let's, <laughs> let's see if I can. It happened before. Maybe the magic can happen again. And while I'm doing that, you know, one of the first things that I, I need to discuss with prospective CPA applicants, especially for historic preservation is, hey, what you're proposing is maintenance. You know, it's it's painting trim, it's doing basic stuff that you need to be doing with other funds. That's, that is not allowable 
with CPA and anything else um, could potentially make it to the application stage, you know, if it's rehabilitation and restoration. Um, but it's it may not be something that the committee feels is a priority. Oh, hurrah. Life's little victories. Okay, so we have to send a letter or not to send a letter. Uh, and if so, how much do we lay on the line in the letter or how much do we wait for a uh, personal meeting, either as a committee or representatives to meet with central services folks and discuss our plans? Uh, um, do we go with a more sort of nuanced message or do we go with a more straightforward one? Uh, anybody want to? Have further thoughts on this. It, it's always difficult to write to write letters by committee, and here we have we have two different ones. I mean, an option is uh, to um, have Sarah re rework this, and for us to revisit this. I mean, it's not something that has to come out at this at this meeting. We've recommended three hundred thousand. That's what's happening. Uh, we we. We want to make our feelings known. The question is, do we have that consensus of how it is that we want to structure this letter, whether we want to send it now, or we want to send it in the future? Um, any comments on, additional comments on this? Yeah, I can't I, uh, my proposal um, would be to use uh, Martha's letter and change the last sentence paragraph into the committee requesting a meeting uh, and that we uh, address the substance of our concerns um, in that meeting and not try to wordsmith it into a letter at this point. Okay, speaking of wordsmithing, Sarah, can you? Kevin is like is like to meet to um, to your I, liking. I would, I, I would probably use a request. Uh, I, I had originally been thinking that maybe we say in anticipation of um, or before any further uh, consideration of applications from the city. That, that man, let's just keep all of that for the uh, verbal part of the discussion at a meeting. But to say that the uh, uh, the committee requests. A meeting with uh, city representatives. That that's what I was originally thinking, Sarah. Is that we we sort of draw a line, say, hey, if you think you're going to come back to us, um, and we think you probably will, then we've got to clarify some things before that happens, and therefore let's do it. Let's uh, have a meeting. Or Sarah can feel all of her eyes on her, on her fingers as she types these well, out. It's, it's, it's not it, as bad it, as it used to be in, in person. Well, it's it's clear, Sarah, that you're a digital native. If this were me, I would, we would still be back uh, an hour ago. Uh, I think structure is down there, Sarah. There oh, oh, hang on. I got to stop the share and then I'll start it again. So it's bigger. I don't know how to flip it over. While Sarah's doing that, there we go. So, so Kevin's recommendation is we drop the third paragraph from Sarah's letter. We go with Martha's with uh, with some word smithing there. Uh, other comments about this? Um, Chris Hellman? Anybody else? Um, the other thing I think I, um, I wanted to discuss is is whether uh, Pat is the is the proper audience. I know he's the functionary, but since we're talking about budgetary decisions that 
ultimately originated a higher pay grade than him. I my my original feeling was that this should be directed at the mayor. Um uh, as the chief executive who 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 generates all budget decisions um and i don't think it, i don't think we ought to if if that's actually the proper audience i don't think that we ought to rely on the trickle up theory about information i think i think this type of thing trickles down more easily than it trickles up um so uh you know that's just something else to throw out there Chris, while you were talking, you saw Sarah tweak that last sentence. She does have an or mayor there, central services, a finance director, or mayor. Um, and or mayor. And again, I don't think we need to meet with the mayor, but I, I do think that they're, you know, that office is is where where all budget decisions start and end um, before they get to the council. So, there's also a finance committee on the city council, correct? Uh, there is the finance committee, but uh, it, the projects themselves, I think, would would be born more from the staff level than than they would from the. Uh, City Council Committee, although they could certainly be part of it later down the road. Right, but I think my point is that it's not necessarily the functionaries that 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 need to hear directly from us. It's it's the the people who are in the seats of decision making who I want to be sure know that this is something that we're concerned about. Um, so. I think Chris is spot on with that. I really do. I think it has to come from the top. And, you know, it's unfortunate that we've been placed in this role of having to deliver that information or to be the harbinger um, or the provocateur or whatever you want to call it. But, you know, that's where we are because we're being confronted with these requests. Is that, is that last line acceptable? Um, I would just say prior to entertaining any future CPA applications for um, because yeah. there it, there needs to be a verb in there. So the, yeah, so so the CPC would be considering the applications. Um, Okay. All right. Other folks want to comment on this besides the Martha and Chris tag team. Is the mayor addressed? Uh, the, the the letter is addressed to Pat. Do we want to change that to? Like, I think it makes sense to me that you would say you would send it to the mayor, and the mayor can send it on to the like. I forget what word you use, Chris, but the like pre person, you know goes down a better, easier than up. So should we just address it to the mayor and whoever else or whatever? You could CC them. Yeah, copy the mayor. Because otherwise we'll have to change the first paragraph. Be here all night. Okay. How are folks with this redraft of our of our letter going out? Uh, let's go down the line. Jeff, good with this? Yes. Uh, Chris Tate. Uh, yes, if we change the the red font color to black. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Julia. Yeah, I, I'm fine with this. Uh, Lemmy. Yeah. 
uh, I'm not seeing everybody who's out there, forgive me. Uh, Kevin? Yes, this is good. Martha? Yep, it's fine. Chris? Hellman? Yeah, nice work. Sarah? I think it's good. Okay. Uh, well, that was somewhat painful, but we got there. So that uh, you just have to remember that this is what we've done. So um, in terms of when we move on to the next item, our plan really needs to involve how to how to deal with deferred maintenance from city projects for the community preservation plan, um, but also to make sure that that we follow through on this on this letter and have this meeting. So let's let us keep that in mind. Sarah, do we do we vote on the letter when we send this out as a committee? The, oh, the, the sense of the committee. I, I I'm sorry, that. Julia. Did we have comments from Julia? Yeah, I spoke up. Oh, okay, good. Um, I'm sorry, Sarah, what did you say? Yes, I, I think the, the sense of the committee, I think it's fine on that. Okay, good. And we do have a sense of committee. Um, so the line item that we're dealing with in the agenda is uh, discussing feedback to applicants. Do we have any other, so this is just the Memorial Hall applicant. Do we have any other feedback we'd like to give to any of the other applicants about any of the other issues that folks can think of? Thinking, thinking, thinking. Uh, good to go on that. Just this Memorial Hall. Lemmy, was that a hand up? Yeah, just the, the playground. I mean, I don't know if this counts as feedback, but like the program manager, I guess they're not likely to be like applicants in the future or something, but just as a new person, it's helpful to think about. Yeah, just if people come and ask for things like the playground, knowing that there should be some sort of project manager or whatever. Yeah, that, that makes sense. And I can certainly relay that to the school department. Um, you know, And I think it's something that they were planning on uh, but didn't have the you know they weren't maybe that far along in their planning but I'll, I'll definitely let them know that that's something that the committee would like to see yeah let me think thanks for reminding us of that any other feedback for um applicants that we can think of Um, Julia, you're on my screen. Your hand is up. Is that because you're wanting to speak, or is that just a hand that's is staying up? That must be a leftover. I, I'll try to lower it. <laughs> okay, hold on. I have to get the cat. Jesus, sorry. Um, okay, any other stuff on or comments on that issue? The funding, the uh, feedback to applicant issue. All right. Uh, as we always do at the end of a funding cycle, we sort of want to do a debriefing. Uh, what worked, what did not work, what we might do differently in the path, in the in the future, to uh, make sure things go smoother and our process is a little more streamlined. Any questions, comments, uh, thoughts? on how to how to make things better. Uh, Chris Tate. Well, this is my first go round, so uh, I don't really have much to compare it to, but I thought the shopping cart uh, technique was seemed efficient to me uh, to kind of, you know, straw poll our way through a bunch of these projects and then bundle them all together. So I liked that as a as a technique. I thought that was successful. Um, good feedback. Thank you, Julia. Yeah, so um, two thoughts. One is still my concern about coming into the fall funding cycle and spending potentially, you know, 75 to 80 percent of what we're going to get, sometimes a little less. In the end, if you look at the amount we spent in the fall and in the spring, it's similar uh, because of the bonding. So we're not going to get more money. I don't think it certainly doesn't look like we have a 
a governmental structure that where the state's going to give us more. Uh, and we really need to think about whether we want to distribute even amounts in the fall and the spring. Uh, do we somehow want to figure out a way to manage fall and spring cycles? Or do we just continue to say whatever comes our way comes our way? And if we spend all our money in the fall, I'm sorry for the spring. H how do we manage two cycles of funding is something I'd really like us to look at. Um, and then the second thing is just a small comment, which is that I'd like us to get back to providing a clear amount of time people have for their presentation and potentially asking them to stick to it. We had presentations of varying length, sometimes very long, and uh, we had read through the proposals. And so it, it I, I'm very happy that people come to speak to us and that the public comes later on. Um, but I'm wondering if we can uh, keep ourselves to time, especially when we have lots of applications. That's it. Julia, do you have a, so so if I could just make comments on, on a couple of those real quick. One is uh, one way to address um, your first comment is that once we begin to tackle our community preservation plan, that we sort of um, uh, think about that issue in terms of spring and fall funding. One suggestion you made, Julia, is that we have one round. So we could sort of radically change how how we want to do that. So I think I think that's certainly something to consider in the in our revision and our updating of the community preservation plan that we'll be doing um, the rest of this year. The other thing is to have that conversation at the start of the funding cycle again. So it can be addressed in, in, in both those ways. Uh, your, your second comment about time, do you have a specific amount of time? I think in the past, We've gone for as little as 20 minutes. Um, do you want to suggest a time limit for presentations? Do you want it, dep depending on how many applicants or applications we get, is there, are, do you have thoughts on that, Julie? So um, on your first comment, which is possibly going down to one funding cycle, and I know that's what some towns and cities do, and in part they do that because then, then they see everything that's before them and can make all of the decisions. Uh, and, you know, I have to admit that part of me was wondering if we took all of the all of the projects that came before us fall and spring and ranked them from fall to spring, would we have made the same funding decisions? I, we may have, but we may not have. So I, I do really want us to look at that with some care. In terms of time, I am happy not to be a chair and I'm happy to hand that to the chair. Uh, but I'm but I, I, I just there were just some 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 moments where the presentations got long and and repetitive as 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 I am being. So thanks. Two great suggestions for us to as to look at this funding round issue as well as um, making sure that applicants don't overextend overextend their 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 welcome. Um, other recommendations or de debriefing issues will work or didn't work, things to do differently for next round. Uh, Kevin, um, uh, let me. Um, yeah, just on the uh, the funding cycle thing, I think I, I would be amenable to like the fall cycle being the one where we recommend like is our primary cycle, but holding the second one is like an overflow, like I, I don't know, losing the opportunity to spend um, extra money that might be left over, you know, like really make it clear that the second one is like a leftover cycle, not necessarily like where you should apply, but in the event that we don't spend a lot of money to like get rid of the spring cycle would be a shame. Um, which kind of leads me to my sort of second, I don't know, it's just a thought, but I don't really have any specific feedback or something that could be different, but just like thinking about what it takes to write an application like those pickleball folks like were so great and like so organized and had probably people who were playing pickleball who had written things like grant applications before um and just wondering like how yeah we're making like the process a more accessible or like what happens if there's like a group of people that doesn't have people who work at nonprofits in their cohort and want to access like cpa money how do we help them do that um it's just like on my brain, but I don't feel like it's urgent. 
but it's you know something that is important to me that like not just people who like know how to do these things can ask for this money so yeah that's my thought not not a lot of solutions no it is a, it's a really great comment uh let me the people who get money are often the ones who could write grants and for those who are uh that's familiar with writing grants it puts them at a at a at a disadvantage and how can we help that and how can we work with groups who um don't feel confident in in or or have experience in doing that to make sure that they are welcome and invite and invited to submit stuff and that's something maybe to flag for our community preservation plan how to make those those options available great great comments kevin I was sorry, just to follow up really quick. The ARPA funding process had some really cool resources in it, just like to plug it. They had like a draft budget and like draft stuff. So if there's like places to look, that might be a place to look. It's the ARPA funding process that like took a couple extra steps to try to have it be more accessible. Uh, Sarah, are you flagging these suggestions? Great, thank you. Kevin? Yeah, I just was... Uh... Uh, by way of um, debriefing feedback, I want to echo what Chris Tate said, that as a first time around, the way you uh, organize the meetings with polling individuals to see where everybody's at and then bundling everything into a shopping cart, I thought uh, that's a far more efficient way than I've seen other committees wrestle with similar uh, uh, similar problems. Um, I also had a question that I was going to raise, and um, this echoes what Julia brought up, is why are there two rounds? Um, there don't seem to be uh, big differences in uh, what money is going to be available. Um, there's a little more fine tuning that happens, but it isn't like there's two plugs of money. And so that why there was two rounds was one of my questions. Certainly something to address as we move on into revising the community preservation plan. Yeah. Um, Just to give and, some additional background on that, the um, the two round structure was initially developed um, by the, the first iteration of the Community Preservation Committee, basically as a, as a way to make it more friendly for applicants. Um, so recognizing that um, a, one funding round a year is a long time to wait, depending on uh, structure and cycles of project development um, and unknowns that come up. So that, that was basically a, a way to make it available to more applicants without having it completely open-ended, which some communities do do, uh, especially those who only have one town meeting a year, they'll they'll take applications on a rolling basis. But this was a way to make it a little bit more structured, um, but still only have to present those to city council twice a year. But thanks, sir. I think it's hats off to Julia for suggesting the shopping cart thing. I think that was, as I recall, that was, that was Julia's recommendation. Uh, Jeff, comments? Um, I just just echo what Sarah just said. My my experience with the two rounds has always been that things were in flux, and that everybody wasn't ready to go in the fall session, and that there were things that showed up in the second round that weren't necessarily. Um, conceived or on the front burner in the first round and to, and the, to then turn around and wait a whole year until something could happen um i thought was a was a lot to ask at least that was my experience because the two rounds was already in place by the time i got to the committee but um just looking at it um from the outside and i watched the video of the last meeting um every time i think oh boy um, we got some stuff to work through. How are we going to do it this time? Um, we seem to come through um, flying colors. And I, I'm really, this is one of the best committees I've ever been on in my career of doing this, that, and the other. And um, I'm, I'm proud of the work that we do. And I think we provide a central service. And I think we did it again tonight. Um, and talking about that letter. So um, overall, I'm just really, really pleased with what this group does. And, and uh, thank you for your leadership, Brian. Thank you, Joe. I share that 
sense of pride in with with the work that we do. Uh, Martha. Yeah, I don't have much to add. I agree with everything that Jeff said and everybody. Um, I would just make one comment about the one round versus two. And I think um, perhaps this is what you were saying, Jeff, that having two rounds does provide an op it, it allows applicants in the fall who don't quite make it to kind of be put on the waiting list um, if you're applying to a college or university. And you know, we encourage them to come back and we're able to do that and they don't have to wait another whole year. So this time it was historic Northampton. Remember they came in the fall, we couldn't fund them and then they came back and, and they got it. And um, I think that's a really important function uh, because it is a long time to wait. And the other thing is the two rounds keeps the um, program alive, um, you know, kind of more all year round. It's not just a three month operation and that's great for our visibility. Uh, but again, to all the community members, I think we, it is a great group. And Brian, as always, I think you're the best. So, thank you, Martha. Uh, Julia, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't have a hand up. I, I think your screen is showing me his hand up, but I'm hands down. I'm hands on. I'm just not handy. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm excited to have conversations about how, how we do want to handle our, our funding, whether it be one round or two round. Uh, I currently live in a nonprofit world where all of our funding is a one round thing, and we are constantly chasing money. Uh, and it's out there to chase. Um, and so uh, in terms of what Lemmy said, uh, there are plenty of, and we could put one together ourselves, there are plenty of toolkits available to people who are learning how to how to chase the um the 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 grant money and and maybe that's what we need is a, a cpa toolkit uh, uh, the other thing is that all of the past applications are publicly available i love that i send people to that all the time i think that is a remarkable service that uh, the city and that sarah does so thank you sarah for archiving and getting everything out there to the public uh who hasn't spoken on this chris day did you speak i let us off brian you let us off thank you uh chris hellman uh yeah um I, I i'd love to have the conversation about one year versus two years i won't get into it now um i i really appreciate lemmy's comments about accessibility and um the idea of creating a toolkit for applicants because as you know we, we we talk about this periodically which is how do we get new blood in the door as far as quests go. Um, I have yet to run into somebody who said the reason I didn't apply was because it was too complicated. Um, so I don't know if it's truly a barrier, but I do think that putting together a toolkit that has our name on it would help in, in those situations, but it would also be a good advertising tool. It'd be a way to not just show people how to do it, but to get them interested in 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 thinking about it. So, you know, if it's something that that we can do without too much difficulty, I I think it would be something a, a nice resource to have available to any 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 potential applic applicants. So, and as always, I, I I would I would feel bad about going to one round because I like doing this. Um, I enjoy spending time with y'all, and I um I. I think we flourish under Brian's leadership. And so um, I'll be hard pressed to argue for one round, but <laughs> there we go. Thank you, Chris. Did everyone have a chance to speak to this? Yes. Uh, I would like to just once again, applaud Sarah's uh, work on our behalf. I mean, she's, she's a, a great advocate for us and, I don't know if I if I appreciate uh, or understand the amount of work that she does um, as all of these applicants are constantly sending in requests for this, that, and the other thing. So she certainly has her hands full with our committee, let alone all the other work that she does. So th Sarah, thank you very much. And, uh, and we hope to have you here forever. So, uh, and Sarah's very sad because her last skiing was done this last weekend. Uh, she can't ski in May, so um, 
uh, we give you our sympathy and and Sarah's hoping for winter to come soon again so she can get back on the slopes. No, there's plenty of wonderful things to do in the summer. Oh, good. I've, I've come uh, to terms with it. It's okay. And one of those wonderful things is to update the community preservation plan. Uh, so Sarah, you want to talk about that last agenda item? Sure. And I can do that. So um, the community preservation plan is, is both the guiding document for the committee and applicants and for the public about what the, the CPC in Northampton is, what it does, what it can and can't fund, um, and what its priorities are for the future. And it also fulfills the committee's obligation to hold a public hearing. This is annually, but it's we've got guidance that it's periodically um, about the priorities for Community Preservation Act funding in the city. Um, so time to update it now. Um, we did a pretty significant update last time, and I think it's, the date on it is 2022. It, it looks pretty good. It's in a format that we can work with. Uh, as you noted before, Brian would uh, incorporating the the new historic preservation plan element of sustainable Northampton will be the bulk of the work this time, as well as making all the considerations of uh, administrative things that were discussed tonight. Um, so I am happy to take a first stab at it, um, but would would love either a, a official subcommittee or just interested um, members of the committee to help me with that. I, I think part of your hope, Sarah, and certainly my hope is um, for folks who represent certain, I don't want to say constituents, but whatever it is, to uh, look at their section, Martha yeah. for the historic and Kevin for the uh, cons, conservation stuff, Julia for rec, Jeff for housing, uh, and all the rest of us for all of it. Um, and Sarah, do you have a, a timeline for this? What what are your thoughts of how? And I think ideally our first meeting back in the fall, or maybe if we want to work on it once as a as a full committee or even twice, um, would be to have that the public hearing um in sometime in, in September before the funding round begins. And that would also solidify any potential changes about the number of funding rounds, setting aside. Uh, strict fifty percent for each round, or or other changes. Uh, Sarah, the public comment section comes before we do any sort of revisions. Is that correct? No. So that typically we've done it as the um, you know the here's our here's our draft plan. Everyone, um, it, it includes priorities for funding. Um, we'd love to hear your feedback and input. We haven't, except for the the very beginning of the CPA, really gotten any public input at all. Um, and, and I, I think any... a lot of that is because um, the CPA plan is really built off of other long-term planning efforts. So the open space section incorporates all of the, the goals and recommendations of the open space plan. Um, and same with all of the sections, except until now the historic preservation section. But because that's new, it, it might garner a little bit more discussion and uh, really trying to distill what the priorities for CPA funding from that plan um, will need a little bit more work. Uh, do you have recommendations, Sarah, for how this should play out over the summer, end of spring, summer? I, I think it depends on the preference of the committee. I mean, I, I would be happy to meet as a as a full group or a, a subcommittee and, and work through it, or people could take a first read of it, send me suggestions and then, um, we could get together with a smaller group. It, it depends on how interested people are and, and how you want to tackle it. Uh, it seems like that recommendation to to uh, have us look at our individual pieces in great detail, but the whole plan in, in detail as well, send comments to you. Uh, and then by, I mean, is there a date by July 1st or something that gives us Two months. Yeah, that would be great. Uh, so if we, if people could take a look at, you know, your own sections, um, flag anything that's really out of date and just doesn't make sense anymore, send me those comments and I'll be doing the same. And then I can put together a, a draft plan, um, maybe for a committee meeting sometime in August, if that would work. So we would have potentially one extra working meeting. Okay, August or 
September we could do as well, correct? Yeah, or is yeah, that, definitely. Is um, council isn't rolling over this year, so we won't have that firm deadline at the end of December to have to uh, have everything considered and approved by council. Okay. Uh, Chris Helman? Uh, yeah, so um, in the letter, I noted um, that the... Uh, completed historic preservation planning you talked about integrating that in um i know i looked at the draft last year um where where can i find the 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 final version so the it's it's the final draft at this point and will be considered um by the planning board at their second meeting in june uh, but there's a link to it on the planning and sustainability homepage or historic commission page either one great thank you So how does that sound for folks? Um, Sarah sends out or gives us a link at least to her comments. So Sarah, you'd have to get your comments in fairly. Well, no, we're gonna send you our comments by July the 1st. You will incorporate those into some sort of draft form, paying particular attention, it seems like, to historic preservation and to the new uh, plan that the historic folks are coming up with. Um, and then taking our comments into making yet another draft that we could look at as a full committee. I mean, that's problematic to wordsmith as a committee, but if we're looking at the draft, that sort of a, a, a second draft that you've done, incorporating your first comments and our second comments would be really helpful. And then scheduling that for either August, which can be problematic, I think, given people's schedules, maybe September might be a little bit easier. And usually we don't meet in September, so perhaps doing that. Um, and then we would allow, what, two weeks for public comments and then have a public comments section. But but again, for new folks, I don't think in my time we've ever had anyone comment on that. I, I don't <laughs> think so. So we have a, a formal public hearing that's advertised. Um, we've ha we, we typically have the draft available before that. Uh, but, but no, we haven't, at, at least in the last, I think, 10 years, gotten any um, significant comment about it, or I don't think any comment at all. So we could we could even do that in our first main meeting in October, perhaps have incorporate that public comment section, uh, hoping that people show up and, and talk about it, but but not anticipating they, they may do so. Does that timeline make sense, uh, Martha? Yeah, I just wondered um, if it is going to be important to revise this before the next application deadline. It doesn't really not matter. Yeah, and if if we're going to be making significant changes to the way the funding rounds work um, or the way the applications look, then that would be more critical. Okay, and we should know we should know that then by July, right? Because yeah, I mean, yeah, if everyone could look at the administrative section of the plan and, and think about any changes you'd like to make. I mean, some uh, some of the recommendations we discussed, like a toolkit or additional resources, don't necessarily need to be part of the plan. That could be just separate links to things on the, the CPC mm -hmm. website. So it behooves us to go onto the website and take a look at that uh, plan as it exists right now, correct, Sarah? Yes, definitely. And be, getting, be, be, be giving comments to Sarah as soon as we can. And Sarah, maybe you can send us out uh, periodic reminders about, <laughs> about that. Sure, I'll, I'll just send the Word version to everybody. That's probably easiest to do. And then I'll, yeah, I'll bug you every once in a while. And then bug us, yeah, maybe maybe a few times. Um, great. Uh, other questions or comments about the need to update this uh, community preservation plan? And again, hats off or thanks to Martha for the, for spending a lot of time, I know, at this, I think you've done with the historic preservation plan and incorporating a lot of those changes uh, into the community preservation plan. So thank you for that. Anything else on this issue? Any other business not foreseen when the agenda was published? Well, it is May Day, we will not see each other for a few months. Uh, I wish everyone a very happy spring into summer. Uh, we will get back together once 
the new year, the new funding cycle rolls around, if not before, if we need to meet for a uh, community preservation plan update. Um, Thank you for all your hard work. Pat yourselves on the back for another successful funding round or rounds. Uh, we have a well-deserved few months off and I wish everybody well for that. Sarah, thank you for your work because you don't get time off. Sorry. Uh, you <laughs> must, must continue on our behalf doing the good work. Um, but again, thanks to, thanks to everybody for all the good work that we do and that you do. And without further ado, is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Thank you, Jeff. A second. Second. A few seconds out there. Uh, wish you the best, and we'll see you when we see you.